Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Canesport.com post-game show. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Canesport.com, joined by Bruce Warner, the voice of the fan, and our special guest tonight, Mr. Kelvin Harris, who I just know is going to have all the answers for what we saw today <laughs> yes. at Hard Rock Stadium. Um, just a horrible, horrible day for the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, a complete organizational failure. Um, the, the quarterback situation, controversy now, whatever you want to call it, is going to mask all of the other things that we saw happen out there on the field today. Um, physicality at the line of scrimmage, Middle Tennessee State was the more physical team. The scariest thing to me was the disparity in team speed. Middle Tennessee State was the faster team on the field today. Schemes? You're going to have to argue that Middle Tennessee State had the better offensive scheme today. Now, there's nothing you know, to argue, Gary. It's true. Maybe, maybe it's because it worked so well, but you would have to be fair to say they had the better offensive scheme today. So when you add it all up, a complete organizational failure for us to discuss tonight on the show. Bruce, Kelvin, you look exhausted, my man. Yeah, you're scared of me. You look you're like you're playing out there yourself. You're yawning. You're grimacing. Uh, so let me go to first to you to wake you up. What what in the world do you feel happened to the Miami Hurricanes today? I think the kids uh, mailed it in. I think that they took this team for granted. And they're um, – that that team's coaching staff put together a great game plan, and they just out physical us, which is surprising because last week we out physical a pretty big and athletic SEC team, an SEC team that plays in the best division in Power Five football, and we should have won that game. But today we just peed all over ourselves. Melvin, you know, last week we played. And we didn't win. There were mistakes. We talked about it all week on all these shows. Um, today, the receivers did pretty good when the balls were hitting them in the hands. Um, <clears throat> it didn't really screw up. But everything else fell apart. The whole damn thing fell apart. It's unbelievable what we saw today. Just unreal. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little confused as to what just happened. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I, I, I'm going to tell you guys, I'm not confused at all. Um, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm really not. Okay. Um, I was in college station a week ago, about, you know, seven days ago. Now I saw a team lay it all out there physically, mentally, every which way, and they didn't get it done. And I think that when you, when you have a team that's had to work as hard as these guys have had to work under Mario Cristobal for nine months. And he works them now. You know that, right, Calvin? So, like, mm -hmm. when when you do that for nine months and you're giving it all that you have, um, staff, players, entire organization, and then you go to College Station and you play as physical of a football game as you'll see. I mean, Texas a and losing 14 nothing to Arkansas right now. Yep. Okay? Uh, yeah, but, but I expected that. Yeah, but they, well, they have, no, they have nothing in the tank today either, I guarantee you. Um, and I saw a Miami team walk into Hard Rock today that had nothing in the tank, nothing to give physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, and they were horrendous out there. They, they were coming yeah, off a loss, Gary. They should have been pissed off and fired. Yeah, that's, an, that's, that's inexcusable. Um, of course. First, I'm not saying it's excusable. I'm just saying that's what I saw. I mean, you know... I, these guys might have over over like Tyler Van Dyke has played himself into the transfer portal because there's a good chance that Jake Garcia could keep the starting quarterback position because he looked so much better today. And to be honest with you, Tyler hasn't looked good all season. And you know, I, I, I have I have been I have left sent multiple messages to him through Malik Rozier that you got to do extra work with the receivers before practice, after practice, and also extra film work. But, you know, I don't, I don't have to ask if they're doing that because the results show that they're not. And I mean, I was just looking, guys are getting beat on, you know, the offensive line, 
last week they they pushed around Texas A and M. This week they got pushed around, and it's like it doesn't make uh, to me it doesn't make any sense. Now, I will say this: there's a good chance that Middle Tennessee State probably changed up uh, the scheme. I got to go back and look at their first two games, first two three games, but I'm sure they added some wrinkles to their defense. But still, come on. And then they look really good. Our secondary looked the biggest. They could, they could, well, you talking about the line of scrimmage? They couldn't move anybody, Kelvin. They couldn't not no. move. They couldn't gain a yard on this team. I mean, I think they had sixty yards rushing. I'll, I'll pull up the stats in a minute, but but they they had nothing in the tank. I'm telling. Like it was such a difference from a week ago. It was startling. Okay. Um, but that, that that's not an ex- that's that's inexcusable. Oh, it's the I'm fourth not game. An excuse. I'm just saying it was the it was the, the facts. Look, I mean, you you get 11, 12, possibly thirteen uh, attempts to um, to win games to to get a chance to put on your pads and play. And if you're a senior, you've you've uh, screwed away four opportunities. So you're down to eight opportunities. Uh, guaranteed opportunities to um, to to continue playing, and you you know if it, it, you know I think one of the problems is that you know I think we're starting to give this generation a pass for something that should that that they can't that they shouldn't have a pass for effort. I don't care what generation you're in, effort has to show up every week and it didn't show up this week. And you know, these guys, some of these guys are gonna be in for a rude awakening when they think that, you know, the draft comes around and they don't hear their name called. Like Will Mallory is not getting drafted. I don't think so either. I thought of that I agree with you. He's slow. He doesn't have great hands either. And he certainly can't block. We saw that again. But then I'll say this. Okay, why are you putting him in position like that? Why not use a Royal? Right. Or Mamarelli. They used the Royal a lot today. Yeah, he got some but, but, ball today. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't let me tell you something, Kelvin. I'm watching that guy. He went to block on a short yardage running play, he and he got play. blown up at the line. You talking about Mallory? No, I'm talking about Arroyo. Do you did you see the play where he yeah. was the short yardage blocker for the second week in a row? He got blown up at the point of attack and was well, then a, we, it was a then little sweet pass to the left, and Parrish got it, but he got the. So this was a run up the middle. I'm talking about. Oh, uh, well, it was well, fourth well, and one. Well, fourth, it was fourth well, and well, one. Run up the middle. The, Arroyo was the lead blocker. He got blown up. Well, if that's the case, then you need to play uh, Memorelli. Maybe. <laughs> he needs but, to play more. But Calvin, let me ask you this. Okay, you you played a lot of football. You played in the National Football League. Was there ever? A time when you stepped foot on the field and you just did not have it. You just you just didn't have the juice that day. You didn't have the, the you know you weren't feeling yourself. You, you you know your body hadn't fully recovered from the week before. Um, you were not anywhere near Kelvin Harris one hundred percent. Did that ever happen to you in your career? No, never. And let me let me say something. In 1995, I did something I think that no one else has ever done in the history of professional football league. I played professional football from the month of March through the middle of November. I went from the World League to the Arena League to the Canadian League. And every week, especially when I got to the CFL because because um. I was, you know, I was the new guy. So, you know, I had to earn my spot. And so when they, when I got reps, you know, I mean, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> so let, let's go from here, Gary. What happens now? We have two weeks before the next game. Do you take it easy on these guys? No. Nope. The- what do you do? What would you do? Because it seems like this past week, they, all they talked about was correcting the mistakes. And yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to Mario after the game or go to his post game because I I was coming back to the studio for this show. Uh, so I'm going to preface it that I don't know what he's going to do, and I don't know if he discussed that. I would give these kids a couple days off. No, and I, no, and I, and no. I would, well, I would just wait. Just wait room work. I would get in the lab with my coaches, Bruce. Mm-hmm. They got to figure some things out. 
Okay. But because before, wait, wait, one second quickly. What did you see any of this during this week of practice? Did you see any of this lack of days of or any of that kind of stuff? We weren't allowed out there. You're not allowed. Okay. No. Like, practice has been shut down. Okay. okay. <laughs> We have not been allowed out there. They don't want us to see who's injured, who's not injured. A lot of guys were banged up today. Yes. Um, but but here's what I'm gonna say: these coaches and they're you know this is a good staff, and and they need to get back in the lab themselves and figure some things out because there's a lot of what they're doing that's not working. And you know we're gonna talk about Tyler Van Dyke today a lot. I'm sure um, more all, all the things that could possibly have gone wrong with him, uh, but. Uh, he still is the same guy that, that had six 300-yard passing games to finish last season. Now, uh, we'll talk about everything that's changed since then, but um, it is clear that this offensive system that has been installed is not fitting him very well. Okay? That's correct. That is that's, true. Obvious. that's obvious. Okay? That's obvious. So uh, there will be open quarterback competition. I think that's obvious, too. Uh, and I'm not sure if it fits Jake Garcia better than Tyler. We don't have the foundation to give an opinion on that off of a quarter and a half of work today. Jake Garcia looked pretty good, yeah, uh, he is good. You know, for a lot of that time. Um, but uh, they have to, the coaches are going to have to get in the lab and they're going to have to figure this out a little bit uh, before they start on-field preparation for North Carolina. Now, it, maybe that could be done in 24 hours. Maybe they'll take 48. I don't know. Uh, but they can't just sit there and, and blame this all on the players. Okay. No, uh, the, the 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 offensive coordinator has to go. He's trash. Yeah, I mean, gotta, he, uh, he's not going to go. He's got a three year contract. I, he might not go, but I'm not saying he's good. I don't like him at all. He reminds me of Dan Enos. He's the same thing over and over. But, but he's got no, no, no. He, he's not even. He's not even in the same ballpark with him. He's not going to go. Let's let's keep the conversation on reality. He's not getting fired. <laughs> he's got. He won't be back. He's got a three year contract. He, he won't be back next year. Here. Huh? He won't be back next year. I think Mario cut him. Oh, away. I don't know about that. I'm just saying that. No, he won't gonna, be. He, he won't be back. Go, he's not going to go right now. Okay, he's going to no, finish no. the season. Would we agree on that? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. So, <laughs> so they, they they still got a whole season ahead of them. They got the whole ACC schedule to go here. Like this isn't like fold up the tent and and you know pack the equipment away and and. No, 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 no. I'm not saying no, no. You 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 missed the point. Um, yeah. This guy's been bad. This this is like what he happened in Michigan. Wales Award, Kelvin. Bad. Listen, <laughs> he was bad last year. That, that means nothing. That's something that you guys give out. <laughs> look, look, this guy got ran out of Alabama and he basically got ran out of Michigan. And, you know, Mario, I don't think really felt like he could make uh, Frank Ponce the offensive coordinator. And so he went with this, you know, a, a splash hire. But I, I could see Frank Ponce being an offensive coordinator next year or somebody else um, more high profile. But this guy won't be here next year. All right. Um, so let me give the phone number out. Uh, the number, if you want to call in and be part of the show, is 563-999-3550. 563-999-3550. Uh, you hit the number one on your keypad if you want to come on the show. We want to hear from a whole bunch of you guys tonight, Okay. Um, you know, we want to hear what you thought about the game, what, what you think about where the program's at. Loser three of the last four games against Conference USA teams. Uh, that's reality. FIU, Louisiana Tech, and now today, Middle Tennessee. Um, so 563-999-3550. Hit the one on your keypad if you want to come on the show. We got a couple callers in the queue, so we uh, let's get right to you guys, and then uh, we'll talk more. Uh, let's go out to the 845. You are live on the canesport.com post game show. Gary, how are you doing, Greg? Hey, what's up, Greg? I'm not used to talking to you on Saturday. I'm a little scared. <laughs> um, uh, are you in Roseville defending Mario? Is he, he going to be here 10 years? He, my, Mario's not going to go in the tank from this, Greg. Uh, you know, this is a major setback. <laughs> Greg, are you asking? Greg, you just asked the question. All right, but you just asked the question. What do you want us to say, Greg? Do we want him fired tomorrow and go out and find another? What do you want us to say? Yeah, I mean, Mark. I don't want want him fired, but $8 million a year. We could have got Manny Diaz to have that and got blown out. 
Come on. This is a joke. Um, but, but be a lawyer, Gary. What, what, what do you suggest, Greg? What do you suggest? I'm cross-examining you now. What do you want? Tell us what you, you, you would do. Where's the answer? I don't know. I guess, I guess you need that explanation. Okay. How well, many guys on Middle Tennessee State were recruited by Miami? None. And that's the scary thing. Did you notice that? Did you notice that they were the faster team out there today, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I saw Ivy getting smoked, and James Williams. He's a five-star. That's a joke. I wouldn't have even known he was in the game today, quite frankly. He's not one. He's a pussy. That's what he is. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't get some sleep. Kids are tougher than Texas kids. It didn't look like that this week, did it? No, I, I just said that. Right? Last week, they, they played their asses off and played hard. I, I assume maybe and Gary and I made the same mistake. I assume that was going to be happening today, plus they would improve in the passing game. But I was dead wrong. I admitted I was wrong. I don't know what to say. I'm in shock from all this. Um, Greg, this, this sends Mario back to square one, Greg. Hey, Greg, let me answer your question. Greg, let me answer your question. Okay, this sends Mario This sends Mario back to square one. Uh, they have worked for nine months, seven days a week, uh, 17, 18, 19 hours a day for nine months, okay? That has been demanded of everybody in the building, okay? What happened today sends them back to square one, okay? Recruiting takes on a whole different perspective. They had an, an yeah. elite receiver prospect in that stadium today. Uh, he's going to announce it a couple days between uh, Miami and Georgia. Where do you think he's going to probably uh, announce to? Uh, so recruiting is back to square one. Mario is back to square one. Okay, now, but to answer your question, he's not going to cave. That guy, like he, he, he's not going to not be up to the task. He's going to work harder, Greg. And he, yeah, he is. Huh? He is. He's going to work harder, right? I mean, he already gets up at 5 and at 4.30 in the morning. He'll be getting up at 4, 3.30. I mean, um, he's going to be pushing the guys. He's pushing his staff harder. But, look, this comes down to personal pride. You know, the 20-hour work week that they have set up for these kids, if that's the standard you're using as a player – then you're not going to be very successful because you got to put in extra work. You got to watch film before you go to class uh, during lunchtime. You know, guys get together after, you know, like uh, Wednesday night, somebody orders pizza or whatever, and go over the, the protections uh, or, the, or, or the team. If you're on defense, the, the defensive front seven, you go over um, the formations and, 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 and the routes that you're going to see so that when you get in the game, it's uh, second nature. But hey, you know, I can only relay the information that helped me, you know, be somewhat successful and me and my teammates. But you know what? Hey, it's no skin off my neck because I got three national championship rings. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, these kids are going to some of them are going to find out the harsh realities of how this thing goes come April when the draft rolls around and they don't hear their name. And it's, it, oh, you know, it's it's a real tough ball game. And, you know, you can't, you know, you can't, it's not going to be sugar-coated to you. You're not going to get babysat. You know, it's either you're in the club or you're not in the club. And if you're not in the club, you got to do, do a whole new transformation of, well, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And I think some of these kids, you know, like Will Mallory is playing himself. I don't even know if he get drafted in the XFL right now. I mean, he has played himself out of a check. And so is Tyler Van Dyke. I mean, just atrocious. Just this week, Mel Kuyper said he's the number 20 pick in the draft, Kelvin. He has the ability, but he has not shown it. And here's the problem he has now. His footwork looked bad today, Kelvin. He's throwing off, going backwards. He's throwing. He didn't look too sharp. Well, you know what? Malik Rozier was telling me that, you know, he had talked to him about his footwork because his footwork is terrible. His footwork, his motion is terrible. You know, um, 
And so he needs to go back to the basics. I mean, I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of relationship he had with uh, Frank Ponce, but he's got to he's got to put some more work in because that uh, that won't even get him drafted. But he's he's not a draftable quarterback right now. He yeah, needs to go. He goes to SMU. <laughs> no, to be with his former coach, offensive coordinator. Why not? Well, and then there's the other thing. It's like we don't have a um, a um, no huddle. We don't have a, a speed uh, offense. Like there's just just one one is it one speed, and it, you know, yeah, they don't huddle, but they don't go fast. It's it's like, and then we don't we don't generate explosive plays. I mean, it's nice to have ball control, but you know you got to be able to score in one or two plays sometimes. Yeah, and, you know, but that's true. But we talked about this Wednesday with Lamar because Texas A and M had five DBs, sometimes six, sometimes seven. And I said Wednesday that the blueprint for against Miami is going to be stack the box and dare them to throw deep. But they can't run the ball that well now doing this. And their little swing passes are not successful. So, yeah, I had, they threw a few bombs. Not all of them are complete. But that's the blueprint now to stop Miami. And I I, don't, I just think there's going to be issues. With Van Dyke in the game, it's probably worse. I, I Personally, I think that Garcia is going to start the next time they play. I don't even know if it's quarterback controversy. I don't even know what's inside TVD's head. I don't know if he's just like, shit, I don't care. I don't know what he's thinking. You know, he got um, so honey and his agents and all that stuff. He probably got a lot of smoke blowing up his ass in the offseason. I'm just gonna let me, yeah, I, I want to talk about Van Dyke a lot here in a few minutes. There, I, I have there, there's to me, there's so much going on with that kid. I mean, I, I mean, from you know, new coaches, new system, you know, people talking yeah. now about his mechanics, uh, yeah, NIL, the- NIL deals, agents, uh, Tyler Van Dyme's merchandise. Yeah. Uh, talk about the Heisman. You could go on and on and on. This kid is a mental wreck now. It's so obvious. Am I right, Kelvin? I mean, he that kid is mentally shot right now, and it, 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 he he just can't. He's he can, he can barely function right now out there. But it shouldn't be that way. I mean, look, I, like I said, I played in on three different leagues in one year, and I had to learn three different style offenses. Three different style rule, and you know, after you've been doing this a while, there's a way that you you can translate this stuff to make it easy. You know, usually it's probably the first offense you learn. You use that to translate to the other offenses. But hey, he's the quarterback, so I'm going to say this again. His performance tells me that they're not. He's not doing the extra work. And if he is doing the extra work and he's performing like that, he's just not very good. He he looks to me like he's trying way too hard. His passes are sailing on him. He doesn't look well, comfortable in well, the you, offense. Well, well, yeah, because he's not working with his receivers. I mean, it's it's, it's very simple. You put in the work, and and listen, look. Let's just be honest. The the pressure he's getting right now is not even close to what he's going to see in the NFL. I mean, if you if you poll the average starting quarterback and they watch his protection, they would take that any day. Because the times that he did get knocked down, they got, you know, rough in the passer penalties. So he's not getting knocked down that much. Yeah, he may have a guy come in his face, but you got to have a uh, pocket presence. You got to have – like Dan Marino was the slowest thing since molasses – but he never got sacked because he had pocket presence and he knew how to move inside the pocket. And for whatever reason, that's disappeared with this kid. Yeah, and also, I know, they, they kept on talking about his arm, but he's flinging his sidearm. His, 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 his forward motion is off. You know, I, I noticed on some of the throws, I don't even see him follow through. He's throwing off his back foot. Um, yeah, his, his mechanics are bad. His mechanics are bad. I don't know what happened. I don't, Everything's I don't, gone haywire. What, what guy? I said everything's gone haywire for him. Yeah. LT, it's, it's unbelievable. LT said it's the shock is it's not even shocking. That's the understatement. You can't believe it. It's just yeah. Um, Stumped here. What, right, give me give me one minute, guys. Let me see. Greg, are you still there? Yeah, I just want to ask one more thing. 
Go, go how ahead. Many times are we gonna, how many times are we going to run up the middle and get stuck before we try something? I agree with that. That's crap. I'm sick of that. Sick of it. We can't even toss it to the outside. We, I, what? I don't understand this guy's. You're honest. playing. You were playing today with your fifth string running back. Yeah. Let's call yeah. a spade. Let's call a spade a spade. Uh, four, four, a month ago, string. Thaddeus Franklin was the fifth string running back. Four, four string. Four, four. Well, that's if you put him ahead of Cheney, and and you put him ahead of Citizen. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. Citizen got hurt because we could use that kid. I mean, you had Parrish, Knighton, Citizen, Cheney, and Franklin. Franklin was number five. Okay, he was behind, he was behind Citizen. Oh, one uh, Citizen's yeah. freaking great, man. He just Citizen's, you know, gonna Citizen's gonna be good. Yep. Yeah. So uh, let's call a spade a spade. You're playing with your fifth string running back today. Wow. It's no excuse. He's not a fifth string running oh, back talent. The rooster played, and and um, they got guys in there. They played. They got hurt. Rooster had to come out. Rooster, rooster had to come out. Yeah, he's, he's holding him. Not an excuse. They were a beaten up football team yeah. today. Okay. Tyreek Stevenson had to come out after the first half. Uh, he was beaten up. He was trying. Uh, I'm sure those two plays where he had to run full sprint down the field <laughs> to like save the plays. I'm sure that didn't help the situation. But yeah, um, I think he got beat deep, deep too. Not last week, but today. He, I don't know. I mean, no. You know, you're throwing cornerbacks out there that shouldn't be out there. Yeah. They're getting beat. For ninety-nine yard touchdowns and stuff, then D, then when D, then then when it happens to DJ Ivy, then you're really in trouble. Um, you know, look, yeah, this, but, this was a complete organizational nightmare today. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing about it is, when your number gets called, you got to answer the bell. So, you know, all these all these uh, breakdowns are inexcusable. I mean, that's why you work your technique and practice. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't give up a 98-yard touchdown. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You know, there was no safety on that. There was no safety. If it, if they, that head coach came from the Bobby Bowden tree. Yes. And um, he was and, a quarterback at FSU. And and yeah, he was a quarterback at FSU, and and they love to throw the deep ball off their goal line. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, he, he stole that from. Uh, from the past, but uh, hey, Greg, did we answer everything you had? I just wanted to ask, where is Zion Nelson? He was out injured. Out, yep. Who was that? Zion Nelson. Zion Nelson. I didn't help yeah. you. All right, Greg. Uh, thanks. Thanks for calling in as, as always. All right, let's go out to the nine eight five. You're live on the canesport.com post game show. Gary, this is Swagger Polite from the Canesport. What's up, Swagger? What you got for us, man? Man, are you kidding? Look, coaches don't go back into the lab and make changes, man. They're the most stubborn people in the world. The, these guys better, better not be on. stubborn. What, what, what they're what they're gonna what they're gonna say is they're gonna say this is what we inherited. <laughs> that's what that's what they're gonna say. And there is there is some truth to that. There is there is there is some truth to that. Look, Look, that's, I mean, that, that's exactly what they're going to say. This is what we were stuck with. And what they were stuck with is absolute garbage. You see this nonsense about, about this was a beaten down team and they laid it all on the line at Texas A&M? Who gives a shit? Well, you got to have a room I, 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 ready to whip somebody's ass whenever they don't win. They don't fucking do what they're supposed I, to do. But Swagger. And like Kevin said, there's but, but Swagger, listen. Like, think about the guys they brought in. Um, Mesador, Agude, Caleb Johnson, uh, Porter. Um, did you see any of those guys have any kind of impact on the game today? Um, Mesador. Mesador and Porter. I mean, they, you felt they positively impacted the game? Mesador, yeah. No, no, no but, but – no, but why is that? You know, Mario Pride has pride in well, that he's been working 27 hours a day or whatever. Well, you know, he's trying, they're trying to get a player-led team. There's no leaders in that locker room. Give me a break. Well, if there were, we wouldn't have got beat by Middle Tennessee State today by 14. And well, somebody would have been in somebody's ass on the sideline from a player perspective. Well, Friars, he tried. The Gilbert Friars, he tried. He tried. 
it, it's just it's ridiculous. And also, look, they're, they're soft. This is a soft football team. I mean, all, all these players getting hurt. I mean, it's really, it's ridiculous. To me, if I'm the head coach, what I'm doing the next play, I'm saying, get on the line at the goal line. We're going to run 110. If you quit until I, when I blow the whistle, before I blow the whistle, you're off my football team. Who wants to be a Miami Hurricane? That's what I'm doing in next practice. Who wants to be a damn Miami Hurricane? When I blow the, you start running. If you quit before I blow the whistle, stop. You're out. You're out of here. Get on the bus. Here's what needs to happen, Gary. Look, recruiting, recruiting. Here's, here's what needs to happen. <laughs> we need an overhaul. Lincoln Riley, when he went to USC and LA, he brought in 20 plus players. I think maybe they brought in 20 plus players this year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, they did. And and the and the thing that he was talking about a second ago, that's not allowed anymore. You can't do that. Right. It's against the rules. Well, uh, you see the hey, look, you see the results. All I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, look. I mean, yeah, you're right. Look, Tyler Van Dyke, you're right. I mean, his head's all screwed up. Why? He's thinking about Tyler Van Dyne. T-shirt. I agree. He's not thinking about watching watching film tomorrow. You know, I'm going to work with my receivers. I, I mean, I agree. It's been, know, it's all been too much. First round draft pick, top one. Yeah. Right? And Gary, I remember you saying you don't think it's going to get to his head. He's that kind of a kid, but I guess it did. It's obvious, I think. Right. It, I think everything is contributing to what we're seeing. From him, I think the pressure to live up to all the the hype, the NIL deals, the the agents that are up his butt every five seconds of every day. But that's uh, not pressure. That's not pressure. It is pressure. No, it's not. It's, it is it's, it's pressure it's for a guy that coming into the year had never played in a big football game. Kelvin, he he was the starting quarterback in a bunch of ACC games that were meaningless because the team had already lost four five, four I, what, four or five games. And no, no game is no game is meaningless. And you know, anytime you're in a close game, let me tell you something. That Pitts game, that the, the kids showed a lot of heart. Pitt, the whole team showed a lot of heart against Pitt. They scrapped it out. The the reality is, he's not putting in the work. He can say he's putting in the work. He's not putting in the work because you know how I know this because the 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 the, the, the results on the field tell me he's not doing the extra stuff. And you know, and, and you know, you know, you guys listen. Not alone. Oh, okay, that's why I, I don't know. That, I don't know that we know that, Kelvin. We don't know how much work he's been putting in. Yeah, we don't know that. I, I, I yes. have an idea. Yes, that's not, that's not fair. It, it, no, if, no, no, no. It, it, it is fair because the once again, I'm going to say this again. I talk to these kids, and I've been telling them from the beginning of the season. I, I, I laid it at me and Jakai Clark and his father were on the phone. I said, "Look, this is what y'all need to do. You know, you know, realistically, y'all need to use uh, Southern Mississippi as a test run on Wednesday nights." Or Thursday night, get the whole line together, call out the plays, call your checks, the fronts, everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I told me and Malik Rozier have had multiple conversations about Tyler getting together with the receivers before practice, after practice, right. making the receivers come in and catch the ball, extra work with the jugs. Because pro scouts don't just look at the talent of a quarterback; they look at his leadership ability. And and you know, people are getting on Aaron 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 Rodgers for what he's doing. But he's being a leader. He's basically saying, hey, you motherfuckers suck. And I'm going to let everybody know you suck. You can either hold your tent or get better. Yeah, but but Kelvin, if you're talking about a school work in mechanics, that's got nothing to do with throwing to the receivers. If that's not going to correct it. Ponce or somebody's got to work Say with it. Ponce or somebody can't believe it. He's not working with them. Hey, hold, hold that thought, guys. I got to answer this. <laughs> All right, I'm going to – um. Kevin, I'll, I'll I'll turn I'll turn you off for a moment so you can you can talk about wow. it. But um, I mean, listen, I, I don't think you know. It, I could I, I get what Kelvin's saying. He talks to to certain friends yeah. and stuff, and and they're telling him that Tyler's not working hard enough, and and that might be part of it. But we don't have a log on how many hours he's put in and how many he should have put in. And I I find it hard to believe that somebody on a Mario Cristobal team is not working hard enough. So I'm not going to lay that on him. Um, but I don't, 
I personally don't feel like he is handling the whole thing. And I'm not surprised, but he's not handling the whole thing real well. And I think he's pressing. I think he's trying too hard. Uh, he's overthrowing. Uh, there's just no rhythm to his game right now. And, and that he little looks- square out that he threw, that was horrible. You know, we, we needed to score in that red zone a couple of times. We just couldn't get in. Yeah. It just, just wasn't working. You know, and I thought that um, Garcia came in, looked good, threw a deep ball, threw a lot of quick outs, hit the guy yeah. in the middle. You know, There's, they got there, Hoyer involved today, which is what I wanted to see. But the rest of it was just – the tackling was bad too. There's a bottom line with Garcia, Bruce, and I've said this a million times, that when he got hurt last year, he and Tyler Van Dyke were neck and neck. Yes. I mean, I mean, and I've and and, and I've said this. I, I and I firmly believe this that if you had taken a poll of the entire University of Miami football organization, coaches, trainers, medical people, um, equipment folks, well, you know, whatever category you want to throw in there, and you give everybody a straw ballot, anonymous, and and they vote, who do you think is going to be the future at quarterback at Miami? I will unequivocally say that I think it would have been 75% to 25% in favor of Jake Garcia last September before Jake Garcia got hurt. Now, I, Okay. I, but I think he's got a lot more in, in his background and in, in, with the dad and the coaching and the high school coaching. I think yeah. he's ahead of Van Dyke. He's got a lot. His mechanics are better. He's not as big, but he can throw the ball and he knows what to do and how to look off the receivers. 100%. He lives football. Okay, right. he's a football junkie. Now, just, now it's a year later. Who's to say he's, he's not better than Van Dyke now? Because he wasn't the starter. He might. But have been. Van, well, Van Dyke went on, and Jake's hurt, and Van Dyke played those six right. games at three hundred yard passing games. He deserved to be the starting quarterback. Of course, absolutely. You know, I don't but, think there should have been a, 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 a you know a contest or a competition. He clearly was was great. Yeah, but now it's open again. That, right. that, that's that's right. All right, let me I look. It looks like Kelvin's uh, swagger. Did you have anything ben, else? Van Dyke. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do. Van, Van Dyke is a is look. Van Dyke is going to end up being a case study on the effects of NIL on a, on a young college football player. I, we'll just leave it at that. I I agree. I'm, I'm with you, swagger. It's obvious. I, yep, I agree with I you. Mean, he, he's regressed, not progressed. He's regressed. Like, but but Gary. But Gary, Gary Bruce, I am sick to death about this of this whole flat thing, and we don't have the energy thing. I'm sick of that. I yeah, have to. That's it's the crap. last thing I expected they from this guy play. coaching the team that we'd be flat. They were getting their butts kicked today. Yeah, on both sides of the line up of scrimmage, up and down the field, up and down the field. Yep. yep. And, but, until, and until somebody says we've had enough. In that locker room, somebody wearing that uniform says, I've had enough and gets pissed. It's gonna look like that. I I don't think it's gonna change even if 20 of them get pissed. It's not it's not it's not what's happening. It's, it's not being angry. It's about all the other the talent level is just not there. And you know, one week there's physicality, the next week they're flat. You can't play like that. The good teams don't play like that. Alabama, they'll destroy crummy teams and they'll still destroy really good teams. Because that guy is like locked in, like he's got blinders on in a horse race. He just just beat the crap out of everybody and go home. That's his mentality. And I thought Mario had that. And he might, but right now he doesn't have the horses. I'm not making an excuse. They should not. Well, have I, agree with, I agree with that, Bruce. He doesn't look. I said I've said this on the message board a bunch, Gary. The personnel does everybody. All these people can blame and get it. The personnel doesn't fit what they want to do. They want to be this hour run stop. They don't, have, they don't have the horses for that. This team was built to be a finesse, up tempo. But they can't be that either. Yeah, they they can't be that either, they Swagger. They don't have any receivers. That? That they don't have enough receivers. They no, can't no. They can't play finesse ball either. <laughs> well, I mean, look, Restrepo got hurt. You know, they lost their best two quarter for the best two receivers. They're gone. I mean, look. Last it, 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 a little bit. I mean, it's a mess. Yeah. All right, Swagger. Hey, man, thank you for – Swagger, thank you for calling in, man. Appreciate it. All right, um, 563-999-3550. You hit the one on your keypad. If you want to come on the show, let me get Kelvin back. Looks like he's off the phone. 
Was that Mario? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Listen, I, I, uh, Tyler Van Dyke? <laughs> and I, I, I'm, I'm going to call Malik later on. But listen, first of all, about the offense. Not true. We have the horses to run whatever offense. The play calling is horrendous. Tell me, play you play national championships every year. Where are these horses? Okay, Keyshawn well, Smith. No, no, no. You got you to understand something. The, the, the offensive play calling is horrendous. Look, uh, you know, this is the first time ever that me, Lamar, Ryan, and Sap – all agree on, <laughs> on something. Listen, how many crossing routes do we run today? I don't – maybe one. Maybe listen, one. Listen. Yeah, but we middle, talked about on Wednesday. We said more crossing routes. They didn't do it. Every game, the middle of the field is wide open for crossing routes. Okay, Bashard Smith has, you know, supposedly breakaway speed. Why aren't we just – why aren't we throwing over routes and crossing routes and letting him catch the ball – in space and run. And you know what happens when you do that? Now you get Keyshawn Smith wide open down the field. Okay. Everything this guy does is outside the numbers. It's out route. It's nine routes. It's deep posts. Nothing in the middle. It's just the play calling is terrible. It's terrible. And then the drops are even worse. And wait a minute. Guess who the receiver coach is? The offensive coordinator, right? Yeah. So, so you know, this is an epic fail. But then, you know, look, I'm not saying that, that it's too early for the players to have uh, gotten mentally worn down by Mario because I talked to enough of them that they're, they, they believe in what he's preaching. But that was just ridiculous. I mean, you know, common sense. I, these guys weren't right, you know, Common sense when the team is is backed up, you gotta you gotta be careful for the deep shot because you're trying to you're trying to crowd the line of scrimmage and and, and and keep them from getting the first down. And all they gotta do is just throw that thing over your head, and there's nobody in the middle of the field, and bam. DJ Ivy's gotta be smarter than that. It's better to give up a 10 yard route than a 98 yard route. I mean. They're not playing with common sense. They're not playing with effort. They, oh, today they didn't because, you know, the rest of the season, um, the, the well, the first half of Southern Mississippi, they kind of slept walk through that, and then they woke up. But Tyler Van Dyke's mechanics are terrible right now. Um, he He's going to have to come. He, two things are going to happen. Either he comes back next year or he transfers. But he's not going in the draft. And if he does go in the draft, he won't be happy with the results. No, he won't be. Well, I mean, it's too soon to say transfer because we don't know how this is going to play out uh, the, the rest of this year. Um, I mean, it looks like it's going to be very interesting. I will say that. But uh, well, you know, here I'll, I'll say this: we're a zero and zero in the uh, Atlantic in the uh, uh, coastal division. I agree. And, and everybody in our division is trash. The toughest game we're going to have is Pittsburgh. Um, so hard to stay to play us tough. But they're not in our they're not in our our division. But That's it. But an ACC, it matters though; it counts. Southern, they just got their butts kicked by Middle Tennessee State. I don't know Did that you? any I don't know that any game left on the schedule is going to is going to be easy. Nope. Oh, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but we should be favored in every game except maybe Florida State if they keep playing good. What about but, they're going to have to earn that back, Kelvin? I totally agree. I totally agree. But I think that Mario's going to tighten the screws this weekend or this week coming up. It's off week. There's going to be some people's jobs get challenged. Um, it's going to be a lot of hard coaching. And one or two things has happened. Either they're going to respond or they're going to melt and they're going to get replaced. And it's that simple. Uh, first, uh, let, me, let me bring it in. Uh, 21 nothing. Florida State over BC first quarter. Wow. All right, let me bring the yes, – like, that, that's not going to help recruiting either. They just, and they just well, 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 to, 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 to be honest with you, BC, I wish we had BC on our schedule this week, this year because they, 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 they've had a rash of injuries and they're playing a bunch of true freshmen. So that's an easy out. We just lost to Middle Tennessee State. <laughs> okay? I mean, there is no wishing – Calvin, there's no wishing anybody on the schedule. Raiders lost to Middle Tennessee State, a team that was averaging 311 yards of offense just boat raced them today, 507 yards. I mean, hey, 
Hey, you know, college football, the thing about it is every week it's it's like opening up a present at Christmas. You don't know what you're going to get. And, you know, um, these are 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, and it's a different generation. They don't respond to things. I mean, the, the smallest things will change their attitude. But, hey, I got to be honest with you. You only get so many shots to put on the uniform, and when you waste it, you know, you look back years later and you regret it. I mean, right. that's why. Like, yeah, we got a bunch. So um, let's go out to the 304. You are on the canesport.com postgame show. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. In the famous words of Bill Polian when they draft the ball, uh, Trev Albert, who the hell is Del Kuyper? Give me a break. Give me a break. <laughs> I think my dogs have more uh, picks than that guy has. So. Tell everybody tonight, there's no quarterback controversy. I, I'm leaving. I'm on the way home. Just pick up the dog. And the excitement that went across that stadium when Garcia came in, there's no quarterback controversy. Yeah, it was that big. was that big. Yeah. On Garcia. And that, that, that line. I mean, that line was, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's up with Zion but it, it, it's scary to think about it. Everybody loves the backup quarterback. You were there, right? I mean, come on, Gary. Don't act like it was. Don't act like it. I mean, you were there. Did you not hear the fans, the energy? I did. And just the way they mm-hmm. were rallying around him? I mean, it's like, come on. There, I, I, it is what it is. Uh, we're a but, big time program where we want to be a big time program. Thank you, Tyler Van Dyke, for last year. Thank you. And you're going to be a quality backup player this year. And yes, you're going to go to the portal because we got Rashad coming in. It's that all right, but let, but, let, but let me say this, okay? Um, what's your name, by the way? Uh-huh. What's your name? You did, I, I didn't get your name. It's Hurricane Blake. Hey, Hurricane Blake. All right, so let me ask you a question. So, yeah, I hear you, and I obviously saw and heard the same thing. I even saw a recruit, okay, sitting in the stands tweeting – um, on his Twitter, something like it's time for hashtag, it's time for Garcia, or something like that. He has since deleted that, I'm sure, at the urging of somebody on the staff. Uh, somebody on the staff. But do you feel like now all of a sudden, boom, we're going to snap a finger, you're going to make Jake Garcia the starting quarterback, this team's going to run the table? I feel like this team's got a better shot at winning with him at the helm. I mean, you don't see it? Come on. No, oh, no, trust me. I see it, okay? And Tyler Van Dyke had all the benefit of the doubt from me before today. Today was a compound effect. It was way worse. It's just, it just keeps getting worse, and it's clearly in his head. And those comments he made about how he likes to go play on the road as opposed to Hard Rock Stadium, that mm-hmm. didn't help him at all either this week, trust me. And, and, then, and then on top of it, you walk into the stadium and there's nobody there. Uh, I mean, the place was empty today. Okay, I don't. They announced forty-one thousand. There's no chance. Okay, um, I mean, the whole thing. This was a complete organizational nightmare today. Okay, you've got all those empty seats that everybody recruiting against you is going to be texting and tweeting and and emailing to all of the recruits. And, um, and you know, and you know what, Gary? The fans are going to be. A- get butt hurt but hurt when you bring that up because you know this 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 um and and this excuse me but it is what is it bullshit about well if we win we'll show up we were winning in the orange bowl and people weren't showing up so look this is a new age you're 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 supposed to be a fan the um the cleveland browns have never won a super bowl but their fans show up every week and then people will say well we're in miami well ucla has not won a national championship in the last 60 years but their fans they have they pretty much fill up the bottom part of the rose bowl they get 50 to 60 thousand every game i've i lived in la for five years i never saw the rose bowl look like what i see the orange bowl look like so that is a cop out on the fans part because you know, when you're pointing the finger at somebody else, four fingers are pointing back at you. We got a re- we have a comment here from one of the uh, people on the board. It says, um, "Why is Kelvin Harris so close to the camera?" 
That's from uh, a guy named Lamar Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, LP. <laughs> I'd like to see Frank Lattis Jr. show up today. He looked good. I mean, it, it was nice. Uh, he, it looked like he got a little banged up, but it is what it is. Guys, I, I tell you right now, someone mentioned, one of the calls mentioned uh, first, and he has not stuck up in the last two games. Has he been, I mean, has he been playing? What, what's the deal there? Who's he talking about? Frierson. Um, Frierson. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if he play. I mean, I, I'll have to look at the participation. I, I don't remember him making a play. I didn't see him in the game. I saw yeah. him in the sideline, yeah. I, wow, Ohio State is just hammering Wisconsin right now. Yeah. Um, all right, Hurricane, did you have anything else? I mean, hey, it, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, we haven't turned the conference play yet. I know, you know, it's, it's a it's an uphill battle, but I think we have the right quarterback now to lead us, and that makes the world of difference. And I think, I think Coach Cristobal should go ahead and rip the band off and announce, you know, we're going to go with Garcia because, you know, whatever he, he he gives us the best, you know, chance of winning. And let's see what happens. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's a no-brainer. Gentlemen, and from there, I think that, I think they will rally around Garcia. Uh, he, he's, he's right. Over, I think he's right. He's, this kid's got the magnetism. He, he wasn't throwing dots on people. I don't know. I mean, it's just night nice day, and you know, the defense. I, I, I don't know. After last week, you say the tank was empty. I mean, it seems like they got fired up at the end of the game, which is the wrong time to get fired up. Yeah, they but they still gave up a couple long touchdown passes. Yes, they did. Yeah, but you know what? You got to think about something. If you take five plays away, Middle Tennessee didn't do nothing the whole game. Now, mind you, those five plays were huge, but ten, Middle Tennessee scored on on explosive plays. They couldn't run the ball. Um, their quarterback was under a lot of pressure. For the most part. Some of those kids were tough runners. They, yeah, they, they were. Oh, they did okay. 36 was good. Uh, All right, Hurricane. Hey, thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. We'll talk right, we'll, we'll now. Hear from you next time. The guy wants the same guy wants to know why is this bum on? He said we were going to go undefeated. Same Lamar Thomas. <laughs> Tell Lamar I'm sending him the link to the show and the stop yeah. heckling Ke- Kel- Lamar, stop heckling Kelvin in the chat and come I, on the I, show. I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with who Lamar Thomas is. Did he? Where did he play? Where did he play at? Tell him to check his email in a minute, and I will send him the link to the show, and he can come join us. All right, let's go to the three five two. You are on the KaneSport.com post game show. Hey, this is Mike from uh, Gainesville, Florida. Actually, uh, thank God you lost. today, so I can stay a little bit low. Florida lost. Florida I lost to Tennessee. To oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the what? Uh, the one thing I saw from the Gators compared to the Hurricanes is the Gators play with heart all the time. And I, I, I'm, I work closely with a lot of Bull Gators, and they've told me that that team doesn't have as much talent as they used to, but they play with heart. And that's what I did not see from the Hurricanes today. I, I agree. Same old. We lose the game. We let that team beat us twice because we don't come up. And then the same mentality hits that you go back to the old – fundamentals of high tackling, letting people get behind you, and so on. I mean, that's what I saw. Um, I still, I do have the same questions that I've heard some people say. I, I don't, why don't we throw to the running backs? <laughs> I, know. I don't see screens. I don't see anything. And Van Dyke reminds me of Tammy Hill. Sorry to say that, he does. Right, reminds you who? Ryan Tannehill. Oh, yeah, it reminds me of Ryan Tannehill. He, he'll win you some games, but then he'll lose you the games, and then he has no passion when he's walking off the field. He's just looking in the sky. I guess there's some birds up there. Uh, there's some. There's there's something wrong there. I mean, his 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 whole psyche is is a mess. Uh, Sixteen of thirty two, two interceptions, one hundred and thirty eight yards. That's a long way, guys from throwing for 300 yards a game for six straight games. Yeah. There's something wrong. There's something wrong, or I, or like I've been saying, many things wrong. 
Well, whatever it is, he better snap out of it because if he feels uncomfortable with the coaching, he needs to understand that when you get to the pros, you may not get along with your coach. Good point, but, but you gotta you gotta perform because as Robert Bailey told me uh, uh, after they came with the final rosters my rookie year, he said, "Hey man, you got to make the club every week," and that's especially true now. I mean, they'll replace you in a minute. I think and, the last thing he needs to think about is playing in the pros right now. He's got a lot of work to do. No, well, that's what I'm saying. He's played himself out of the draft. Of course he is. Right now, he's, 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 he's like four years, Gary. He can play next year and the year after if he wants to. He's, he's teetering on the transfer year. portal. Right. He could come back. Well, yeah, but if Jake wins the job and holds yeah, on to the job, Tyler will be in the transfer portal. I agree with Kelvin. All right, uh, 352, did you have anything else? I mean, do you really think that Jake Garcia is going to make that big of a difference with this team and the players that they have? And that's all I'll have to say. All right, we'll uh, we'll comment on that. Thanks for calling in. Um, question. Well, he's not a one man team. He's not a one man team. And and you know, I do think that based on what we saw today, that right now he is executing better than Tyler Van Dyke. I mean, there was a yes. discer- there was a discernible difference, right, Calvin? I mean, oh man, I I didn't recognize that guy that started the game for us. Yeah. So he looked like he you know what he looked like. He looked like the guy that I saw in the first half of the Virginia game last year, which was his first start. I mean, he looked like a deer in the headlight. Yeah, that's true. He did look like that, and he, he was frustrated. Crazy. You could just see the frustration in his body language, and he, I, you know, he's like, I think he's like stunned at how poorly he's playing. I mean, he's airmailing. I'm, I'm going to keep going back to this. He is not putting in the work that needs to be put in. You can't just put in the 20 hours and then go hang out at Monty Trainers. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and you know, you know, you'll hear the kids say, well, I'm watching film. It's deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you're the quarterback. You got to tell your receivers, hey, look, we stuck last game. You guys need to be out here on the jugs machine 15, 20 minutes before practice. No, 30 minutes before practice. So we can also get in some extra throwing before practice. And then after practice, we're going to get some extra throwing in. We're going to get some one-on-ones at the, at the, at the goal line. Uh, and then y'all going to get on the jugs. Now, I'm saying this because when I was a true freshman and I was red-shirted, I watched Michael Irvin, Brett Perriman, Benny Blades, and Brian Blades, and, 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 and Bain. They did this every day. I mean, when we were red shirted, we would stay after practice just to watch them do one on ones. You know what I'm saying? They put in the extra work, the way they watch film. And I can tell that these kids aren't doing this because actually I've has I've quizzed a couple of them and some of this stuff is like, okay. You know. So, you know. What about this, Gary? What are your thoughts on the short yardage? You know, that would be again, that was something I thought would be like automatic. They couldn't move anybody today. They were they, they were moving guys last week. Yeah. This week they weren't moving anybody. I don't uh, like the only explanation I can come up with is they were just physically not bouncing. Well, just- I'll say this: Middle Tennessee did a good job of stuffing the gaps. They shot the gaps well, and number seventy didn't have a real good game. Um, Joe Vegas, he didn't have a good game at right guard. Uh, Jakai got beat a couple of times. Uh, and and Tyler's pocket presence. Dan Marino was the slowest quarterback ever, but he hardly ever got sacked because he felt the pressure and his pocket presence was immaculate. He knew how to step up or slide slightly left, or slide slightly right. I mean, hey, listen, that guy was so that guy was so good. He he made a receiver named Lamar Thomas look halfway decent. So the offensive line. If you're looking at film and you're um. If you're the uh, Middle Tennessee and you notice that 99 percent of our runs are up the middle, wouldn't you do that too? Wouldn't you gear up to stuff the inside run, which is exactly what they did. They went up into the outside at all. Do a toss on third and one, fake the handle, do something. But well, I, th- you know, I, I think really, I think the other thing is I don't think Tyler has the autonomy to audible on his own. That's what the announcer said too. And I'll be, Gary, is he right? It's probably right. Yeah. All right. Um, the Canesware.com post game show is presented by Canesware. Let's take a yeah. moment to hear from our friends. Welcome to Canesware. Family owned and operated since 2010. 
Canes Wear has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at caneswear.com. Caneswear, the spot Miami fan shop. Got my right. Kelvin disappeared, so I took. Oh, here he is. Um, so, um, you know. Anyway, let me. Uh, we got a bunch of callers on the line, so let me uh, continue on there. Let's go. Let's go to the four hundred four. You are live on on the Kingsport.com post game show. What's going on, Gary? What's up, Uki? What's up, man? I I got a reading with Kelvin this thing. Um, says I know for a fact. I'm not gonna say any names, but I know for a fact that during the off season, when it came to receivers and quarterbacks off to get together and uh, doing some off, you know, outside of uh, practice reps, Garcia was leading the way. I know people for a fact that was telling you that they would go to Jumpco Park sometimes with a little 707, and Garcia was leading the way. Your boy was not even there to be found. He told on himself after the Southern Miss game. So all of a sudden, they wanted to get together after the Southern Miss decided they were going to do extra reps. Come on, Gary. Yeah, listen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Disputing. You know, here's what I think. I think maybe. T- 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 I will say one thing. Wait one second, Uki. Uki, let me just comment on one thing. I, I do think that he got a little too comfortable with Xavier Restrepo. Okay, they're, they're roommates. They're best friends. Uh, Restrepo was the security blanket. Yeah, but he was putting the work. I get all that, Gary. I get all that, Gary. But what the type of learning and uh, uh, and his QB at roommates at one point? What does that have to do with it? Well, I, I I think that losing Restrepo was a big deal to Tyler Van Dyke. I think losing Restrepo was a big deal to TVD. That was, was a big deal. It's, a, it's a big deal to the whole team because look, Rashard Smith is more physically talented, but Restrepo is a better slot receiver. Yep, no doubt. Especially, especially in the middle where we're talking about, where we, we you know, you said across the if, if Restrepo doesn't get hurt, he's an all conference first or second team receiver. I agree. And Bashar Smith, Bashar Smith has the talent, but I don't see the intangibles. I don't see him, you know, doing the little things, getting, you know, adjusting his routes. Although he did, I, I will say this, he made a great play on that pass interference where he got his body in front right. of the uh the, the db and caused the pi that was a savvy move but i'm talking about like him and the quarterbacks they need to be able to like they and if you get a guy like lamar on he can talk about this what they call reading the triangle and like it's a little difficult it's a little different for the slot receivers but the outside receivers should always be reading the corner, the linebacker, and the safety to their side. And the slot guy should be able to look at the safety and determine whether it's a blitz coming off the corner or if it's coming from the linebacker. And he should be able to just look at the quarterback and side adjust and and break his route off into the middle of the field or just run a quick stop route where the quarterback can throw it to him when he's open and get, get positive yardage. I mean, these are simple things. Mind you, I'm an offensive lineman telling you this. So that lets you know. How basic is simple this thing? Maybe Restrepo is the only guy that can do that, but the rest of the guys can't or haven't been able or haven't worked at it. But he does count. But, on the, but that makes my that there. makes my that, that makes my point, Bruce. Yeah. Okay, what what do you have? You're at the University of Miami to get a degree and play football. Okay, if you have some bras, look. I'm just going to keep it 100. These kids ain't chasing chicks like we chase chicks. We chase chicks. We stayed out till four five in the morning. We went to class sometimes. Uh, guys graduated eventually, but we, between all that, we managed to put in film work. And then, guess what? We didn't have laptops, so we lived at 36, which was across the campus from the facility. So we had to go all the way back to the facility to watch film, and somehow we managed to make it work. There's no excuse for the for the the the. the the P job that they put down today, no excuse. It the only the only explanation is they're not putting in the work, or they're not correcting the mistakes by the coaches. A lot of things. They open up the markets for comments. Well, if they're not correcting the mistakes, that, what that means. Say, Gary, what does he want? Is he still on? All right, Uki. Do you have anything else, man? 
Because we're getting a lot of background noise from you. Huh? Maybe you got your strip club. This is what we've been doing for the last four or five years. No doubt. And they haven't had it in years. All right, Uki, thanks for calling in, man. We'll uh, we'll we'll talk with you next time. Um, hey, I got somebody uh, got, got a lot going on here. All right, listen, there's somebody who calls himself a very upset guy, <laughs> who's just popped into the green room. So we're gonna we're gonna let it, let him join the party here. Very very upset guy <laughs> Oh look, L L Lamar and Bruce have the same shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> LT, I went and got mine yesterday. From Canesware. And it's a medium, just like you. Lamar, you, you don't guys, have your microphone on. You guys are twins. Lamar, don't you don't have your mic. We need your mic. Wait, let, let me unmute you. Wait you got the same beards, though. With the very upset guy. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lamar, you're oh, he's gone. All right, he'll he'll get his act. Right. <laughs> um, all right, well, since we lost Lamar, let me uh let me go to the next caller. Let's go out to the 917. You are on the canesport.com. Post game show. Nine one seven, you with us? Hey, what's up, Gary? BK Hurricane. Hey, what's up, BK? How you doing tonight, man? What's going on, Gary? What's up, everybody? Hey, listen, um, man, I don't even know where to start after this. <laughs> Nobody. Gary, at some point, do you think moving forward the focus? And recruiting should be more towards the transfer portal than bringing in more freshmen because I, I, you have to find a way to put this roster. I don't think they're going to have a choice. I, I I think that what happened in that stadium today, unless something crazy happens the rest of the season, was was so damaging and so devastating uh, that if they are going to if they are going to bring in the level of players that they need to bring in and not just continue to fill the roster with guys. Uh, I think they're going to have to do it in the transfer portal. I, yeah, I, you know, I think it's going to be – well, the NIL money is going to be there, and, and you're making a great point, uh, BK. I, I think the NIL budget just went up today, quite frankly. Like, if you thought you were going to spend – if you thought you were going to spend $10 million, you're going to have to spend fifteen. But but um, But, yeah, I mean, t today was a game changer. Like – Gary, what about possibly losing the guys that have verbally committed? That's it's I'm concerned about that. Could happen. Sure. So we're going to lose a few. We're going to lose a few guys after this one. Look, if we if we finish the season, if, 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 if we win the AC, if we win the ATC Coastal, we will we will not even remember this game. I agree. If they win the Coastal, North Carolina, North Carolina that's a big game. Right. Right. He's one hundred percent right. If they win the coastal, this game will be forgotten. Yes. Yeah. And did you say Carolina? Did you see Carolina? Have you seen Carolina play this year? We still have to beat them. They've been. Well, I, agree. I, I totally, I totally agree. We do have to beat them. Beat them. Veryupsetguy.com. Are you with us now? Can you I'm hear with us, you guys? Can you guys we hear me? Hear we got you, man. Okay, I'm, I'm very upset. I can't even get in the gate. My wife won't even let me in the gate. To my apartment complex. You can sleep over my house tonight. I got. He said, that. "Unless you strip down butt naked and take all that Miami stuff off, you're not coming up in here." <laughs> hey, and, she hey, went to, she, and she went to New Hampshire. So hey, she bl that, she blaming you for the loss. She saying you man. You, she saying you coach those receivers to do that. That's not, that's not my job. You see what's on my hat? XFL baby. XFL. <laughs> uh, Man. Halfway out the door now. <laughs> what, what what is going on with the uh hey you know what and by the way Gary yeah. I was correct their name their name is Middle Tennessee State I yeah, thought right, I was doing are. them a disservice by calling them Middle call Tennessee them Mid yeah Middle Tennessee State but uh they showed us today oh, I got uh gotta take 30, 30 text messages from people that uh that are Middle Tennessee State fans. <laughs> And they 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 were on me. They were on me. Wow. I got 103 text messages. Back. Oh, Gary. 
Bruce. It, it, it's just like the matter they they plug the, the dike hole with a finger and then another one broke. You know, they, they just Man. couldn't stop anything today. Everything went wrong. Hey, by the way, I said um, I got a chance to spend some time with Rudy, who Kevin Harris is best friends with now, and John Ruiz. I was with both of those guys during the game. So um, I heard a lot of different things about uh, plans, and everybody was upset, though. Everybody was upset about this uh, this game, obviously. Um Everybody's an armchair quarterback. We all, you know, I had my plan on um, on Jay Garcia at about the right before the half. I was like, put Jay Garcia in. You need a, a spark at this point. Uh, some people were saying put him in, at, start him at halftime. Uh, obviously, Mario made his own decisions uh, of when he was going to put. Uh, I say Mario and Josh Geddes uh, made their own decisions on when they were going to put the guy in. Um, obviously, he came in, and he, he did provide some type of spark, but I think it was a little too late. LT, if Michael Redding doesn't drop that ball on the sideline on that mm -hmm. first drive of the second half when they were moving mm -hmm. on third down, it was, it was a well-delivered ball. It was right there. He needed to catch it. If he makes that catch, we might have never seen a change. Well, I, I, I definitely agree with that, but at the same time, I, I think because you had a new guy in there, um, if that was that new guy throwing that same pass, there might have been a difference. Um, at that point, they needed a spunk. They needed a spark. Uh, that team was flat, man. You know, Jake um, TDD talked about the fans. Um, one thing you don't do in here in South Florida is talk about the fans, regardless if they come out or not. Uh, unfortunately for him, he's going to find out the hard way. Uh, you will offend, you know, even though they're not coming, you just don't talk about them. You just, for the guys that come out, you perform and you perform well in front of them. So those people that don't come, they'll come the next time. Um, we, we've all found that out. We've seen this. We've, we've, we've known of this for a long time. Uh, I, I, as soon as I saw that quote that he had, I said, oh, this ain't going to be good. It's not going to be good. I mean, um, karma, um, the ghost of the Orange Bowl, there are a lot of things that were working against him. At that point, um, I knew it wasn't going to be good. It, and, those, and those two early picks didn't help. That was yeah, that was horrible. Um, but I mean, you you know, and then then it goes to, hey man, you just talked about us not showing up. Now you see why we don't show up. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it was unfortunate. Uh, that that game in itself was unfortunate. I, I I'm going to have to go back and really watch that film. Uh, and dive into it, but there were, you know, it, it goes back to what I said in the show uh, on Wednesday nights, the Lamar Thomas show, by the way. <laughs> um, Sponsored by Kingswear. There you go. <laughs> um, was Texas a and really that good or that bad? You know, right. it goes back to that, you know. Obviously, I wasn't Kevin Harris who, just, who said we were going to go undefeated or maybe lose two games. Well, we we we're, we're at the two game, we're at the two game uh, floor right now, so they're not to run the table. But did, did who's winning out of Texas A and M and Arkansas? Well, well, I, I I thought Arkansas was gonna blow them out because I didn't think Texas A and M was that good. I'm just that's just my honest opinion. Well, you know what? The quarterback for Arkansas is a grown man. It's Twenty and, to fourteen, Texas A and M in the third. Okay, all right. Well, uh -oh. maybe they are, maybe they are. Pretty decent, but I, I can tell you this. Um, since I'm sitting outside my gate and my wife won't let me in, uh, so I have time to talk. Um, <laughs> I say this, um, man, you know who's dancing right now? Manny D. Manny yeah. D is right now, and Manny D is saying, You, you efforts, you try you to blame me for all this. You <laughs> thought it was my fault. <laughs> It is his fault. Well, it is. It is, but you know, it, it's not. It is, but it's not. One hundred percent is. But he Today got is, eight, but ten million, and he, he, if 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 and and it, it could still play out this way. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, I, we all, I'm sure a lot of us have doubts after today. But if Manny Diaz was the head coach of this team, we would have been sitting here in the preseason wondering, can this key team get to seven wins? Let's be honest. Um, no. What we had hey, man, coming back. There, 
there was a guy yeah. on that staff that I think that probably would have helped us out a little bit. And it's not taking anything from Josh Gaddis, but uh, Rhett Lashley was a, a pretty no, no. Let, let's call it spade a spade. Josh Gaddis is hot garbage, trash, oh, oh, oh. nuclear waste. <laughs> I just think that the, those players um, that Lamar, he had how many, last year were more Lamar, how many, how many, cross, how many cross the roster did we throw today? Um, I'm not sure, Kelvin. Uh, did you did you see any? I didn't see any. There weren't many, but Kelvin, let me ask you a question. And I hear what you're saying, but I, I, I my question is why? Why is Josh Gaddis trash? Yeah. Did you what? Did you see? No, I don't know, no, but give me, tell me why. Tell me why. What is he doing? Let's go back to Texas A&M last week in the red zone. You call a quarterback draw with a statue. Our quarterback is a statue. You have no – that, and then you run him into the boundary of all places. I'll tell you another Ms. thing. I'll, I'll tell you Ms. what. Miss Cleo saw that coming. This will support your argument, Kelvin. I'm I'm watching slow receivers running jet sweeps. Oh, I think um I think Josh Gaddis um it crashed. I think Josh Gaddis might have uh slept with one of Kelvin's girlfriends. That's why, uh, <laughs> Kelvin is really driving. Hey, boy, home. Isn't that a girlfriend? Did he? Yeah, really? well, yeah. I never heard of it. The I guy that. Hey, 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 hey a, a stripper can count as a girlfriend. <laughs> but that's the no. Hey, by the way, this is a Kingswear shirt right here. This is a shirt I wore on a Wednesday night. It will never be worn again. Oh. <laughs> you got the same shirt on. Oh, okay. Bruce, Bruce was playing yeah. dressed. He went out and bought it, bought one for no. himself. No, hey. it, it, it's going it's in the. Uh, I'm not going to hey. throw it away, but. Maybe one of my uncles or cousins or maybe my dad I'd get this shirt. It's, I'm, I'm a superstitious guy. So nice Yeah, let your, let your daughters wear it, like, around the house or something. Hey, man, let me see if my wife going to let me in the gate, man. Hold on. All right, I'll see you. I mean, right, let, listen, we'll to my point. Tonight. To, to my point about the cross the route, last week, me and Sap was watching the game together, or you know, watching the game on the phone, and we both kept saying the same damn thing. When are we gonna run across the route? I mean, Texas AM basically left the middle of the field wide open. Yeah. You got a guy like Bashar Smith, who's supposed to be a 4-4 uh 40 guy, throw him the ball and let him outrun people. I mean, you know, he's not route savvy just yet, but with the ball in his hands, he is um He's affected. He dropped the ball in the last play of the game. That's for sure. That was a well. Hey, that 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 therein lies why you need to be on the jugs, uh, fifteen minutes earlier than you or uh, uh, fifteen to twenty minutes before practice, or fifteen to twenty minutes after practice, because that can't happen. And these kids are not. I'm gonna keep saying it. They're not putting in the work. They might not be. They might not be. Um, they're not putting in the film work. They're not putting. In the work on the practice field, they they may think they're working hard because Mario has made practice hard, but they're not working hard. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just say this before you go to the callers. Um, Middle Tennessee State, they all coached us. They were better than us today. They were smarter than us today. They were prepared. That was mm -hmm. a coaching job. Not taking anything away from any of them. Those kids played hard. And they were everywhere. They were all over our receivers, no matter catches or not. They really played well. Their scheme was incredible. They, they played to, tough. They played tough. They played they tough. But them. they had five big plays. And if you take those five big plays out. But you can't. You don't get to take No, 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 no. I, I totally agree you can't. But what I'm saying is, you know, I hope they don't get too uh, delusional into thinking who they're better than what they are. Because they're not very good. They're, they're, you know. Who cares? Who cares what they are? <laughs> they're, they're, they're a bad memory at this point. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Here's the weird part about this. Our team reminds me of what it's like in the NFL. One week, a team is trash. And then the next week, it's like, damn, they good again. It's like it's a roller coaster ride. And now in college football, 
it's a roller coaster ride. I mean, two weeks ago, everybody was saying Ugalele was terrible and Cole Company was going to take his place. I watched that game today. Good. He played. He but he balled out. He he won the game for them. So I'm not saying that all is lost. It's bad right now. But now we got we're going to find out what the kids are made of because the, the thing that's been constant over the last 15 20 years is we've changed coaches but the players haven't changed. They're the same soft dudes that they've been for the last 20 years. And a lot of it a lot of it is the outside noise. You got you know, a lot of these kids are big time recruits in Dade, Broward County. Everybody's been blowing smoke up their ass their whole career. They get to they get to college. If there's any inkling of toughness, they fold their tent like a lawn chair. And it's not just at our school. This is all over the country. I lived in Texas. It's the same thing in Texas. Kids is, you know, four and five, just like the quarterback for um, A&M, Haynes King. I told my friend who whose son, Anaya Smith, is a slot receiver, I said that I hope to God y'all start that kid against us because he is horrible. Unfortunately for us, Jimbo came to his senses a week early. I was hoping that he would wait till this week to do it because we would have easily won against um, A&M right. if Hanks King would have played. But then that would have camouflaged. That would have gave the game away. Today they kicked our ass. Didn't well, that's what I'm saying. The, if we would have won, if we'd have come back and won last week, it would have camouflaged all of the, our deficiencies. Now, we are basically a naked woman in the middle of a US one right now. We are exposed. <laughs> and now you have to say to yourself, self, I'm naked. I'm on US one. Traffic is hollering at me. Guys are screaming at me. Am I going to clothe myself or am I just going to keep walking down the street butt naked? And that's what we're gonna find out about these kids. Are they gonna are they gonna toughen up or are they gonna bitch up? By the way, I've gotten two calls where I've had to talk people off the ledge. One of them was Rudy, by the way, which doesn't bode well for Gaddis. Nah, Rudy's not gonna Rudy they're, 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 that's a that's Mario's call. That's not Rudy's call. Well, I'm gonna say this. No, 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 no. What you you're missing the point here. What you you're you're missing the point here. If yeah. Rudy, said, I, I know I've known Mario for a long time. He's thinking the same thing I'm thinking. He's not going to come out and say it publicly. But, hey, man, he's thinking, hey, man, this dude is trash. Now, the problem is uh, you got to go find somebody to take his place. And which means Rudy and the, uh, and the you know, the, the administration, they got to come up with some money. Because, you know, hey, we've got enough money. We've got 400 and something million dollars in profit off of you health. So if... Josh, you know, if we got to fire Josh Gaddis and he gets to take his um, his bonus, you know, the rest of his salary, we good. We got, you know, a ton of bread. The the problem is, for at least eight more games. So he, I think he's just got to – he's got to – if, if we lose another couple games, I don't see him making it through the season. Okay. I, I, I see Frank – I see Frank Ponce end up calling the plays. And, look – um. This has just got to get better, you know. Um, and I think one of the one of the one of the problems that Mario ran into is, okay, the perfect scenario is for your quarterback coach to be your offensive coordinator, you know. So the quarterback and the OC can spend a, a lot of time together. Well, okay, our wide receivers coach was our offensive coordinator, but they still, you know, got to spend time with each other. I mean, because like uh, at Clemson, Jeff Scott. And um, Tony Elliott were the offensive coordinators. One was the running back coach. One was the um, wide receivers coach. So it's, it doesn't necessarily have to – the OC doesn't necessarily have to be the quarterback coach. But the quarterback coach definitely has to um, uh, force the quarterback to keep his fundamentals. And Tyler's fundamentals, his mechanics, are just god-awful right now. <laughs> Let me stop you for a minute, Kelvin. Yeah. And I hear you, and I and I get that Josh Gaddis is trash and all that. But Jake Garcia goes in the game in the middle of the third quarter and goes ten of nineteen for one hundred and sixty nine yards. Okay. He played well. Yeah. Who was the offensive coordinator? No, Who's but that's what I was going to say, Gary. Maybe. Let me let me let me let me, let me let me let me hold on. Let me let me let me give you guys a story. We're playing Florida State in nineteen ninety one. And we are calling this, we call it 70 protection, which means 
the running back is supposed to get the backer. Now, what they did is they would stick Kirk Carruthers in the A gap uh, to to the side that I wasn't supposed to block to because we were sliding away from that. And Steve was supposed to go around Geno and get the um, get Carruthers. Well, we didn't do shotgun then. It was under center. And so it was almost impossible, almost impossible. So we go to the sideline and me and Coach Smith get into a heated argument about this. And he's telling me, Steve can pick it up. And I'm like, no, he can't. And you know, what's the funny part about it is, and Steve will tell you, he was standing behind Coach Smith. Every time Coach Smith says Steve could pick it up, he shake his head like, no, nah, I can't get it. So Coach Smith walks away because he said, well, damn it, you do what I say. And we're like, man, fuck you. So then me, Claude, and Leon come together and said, look, fuck what he's talking about. This is what we fixing to do. We called Steve over, and we did the exact thing opposite of what he did and what i'm saying is sometimes you have to outplay the coaching and that's what jake garcia did today he outplayed the coaching i mean he, oh man. you gotta outplay the coach because look there's a lot there's a lot of bad coaches out there it was a good but, story until the punchline talk about finding a way to support your argument man boom <laughs> no, I mean, hey, you look. Now, I'm not saying this guy what every. Play? Hey, what happened on that play? So, what happened? What play? The play you were just talking about. Which oh, Steve... uh, they did. They didn't get any more sacks because we <laughs> slid it. We slid it. I was able to take up Carruthers, and, and you know the rest. I, like every time um, Lamar's got to talk to T. Buck, I always tell him and say, "Hey, tell him Horace is." Horace said hello because the fourth and six, you know, we get the fourth and six. And they were blitzing the hell out of us on that play. But we picked it up the rest of the game. I mean, just one slight adjustment. But then here's the thing. Me, Claude, Leon, we watched a lot of film. You get what I'm saying? I started watching Florida State film in the summertime. I watched all their games from the year before. Same thing with Claude and Leon. So we knew them. We weren't playing them to like the – Tenth game of the year, but we or the ninth game of the year, but we knew them inside and out. And what I'm saying is, these kids, and they just are kids. There's a lot of these kids at these schools. They're not putting in the work. They're just going out there and playing ball, and they're sitting behind this twenty. Lamar, I'll tell you, when he was at Kentucky, Louisville, the kids would say, "Coach, is is you know you you getting close, you're getting close to that time." I mean, they knew, they know the rules, but that's not what makes you great. Let's go to the call. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, let's uh let, let, let's get some more of these guys in. Let's go to the eight. <laughs> yeah, let's go to the eight oh eight. You are on the canesport.com post game show. Hello, Gary. Hello. Hey, what's hey uh who's this Hawaiian cane? Yeah, uh, it's me, Norman. Yeah, yeah what's um, up? What's up, Norman? Yeah, I, I, I hope the game looked didn't look as bad in, in uh in your time zone as it looked in ours. Well, it did, um, but I can kind of agree with what an earlier caller said that we just don't have the right personnel on both sides of the ball. If you look at our linebackers, Corey Flag takes bad angles. Yes. Yeah, he was horrible today. He was horrible. Maybe half a dozen of them tonight. And He's slow, too. He, I don't know. Sometimes he, he just gets lost. And at cornerback, um, we just don't have the numbers. I mean, Ivy gets beaten today on on two routes. And Corey Couch goes out, and we have to – and then Stevenson goes out, and then we have to fill the gap with uh, Curtis, the sophomore, and Jaden Harris is a true freshman. Now, if this has been Mario's team – in year two or year three, we would not have to have this type of guys filling in. Because I, I agree with him. If you lose your senior leaders, you should at least have juniors or third-year guys stepping in. And it happens also on the on the offensive side of the ball, where you see Zion Nelson absent, and then Campbell gets boat raced at least a half a dozen times. And 
right now, we just don't have an eight or nine man rotation on the offensive line. I think we only have what, six or seven? So seven. I, I, I look I look at Manny for that. So, All yeah. those four stars that he had, like Herbert and them guys. That's all I to say, and thanks for taking the call, Gary. All right, Norman. Th thanks for checking in, man. Hey, the, the, two fr the, the two freshmen, Cooper and uh, McCoy, they're going to be really good. They really like those two guys. We keep As, committed already. Especially the Cooper guy. He, um, They yeah. really like him. That's why they were – I'm surprised we didn't see him play tight end today. Um, we can't let Will Mallory block anymore. It, right. it, it just can't happen. It's got to yeah. stop. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey, I, I, I really got to take this. This is Rudy. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, we'll, 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 we'll knock you out for a little bit. Oh my God, Rudy. You know, listen, I love Rudy. I love what Rudy did to help the program and get Mario and the whole thing. But he did his job. Yeah, I think he's, he's empowering himself, to, and he talks to him, and that's just a bad combination. No, it's a bad combo. Yeah, like you know, Rudy. Rudy did his job. He 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 helped facilitate the hiring of Mario. It's Mario's program now. You know, it's it's like it's like Rudy's not going to be firing coaches and you know just you know, listening to Kelvin say Josh Gaddis is is trash and then going and telling Mario he has to fire Josh Gaddis. That didn't happen. All right, um, Josh Gaddis can do a lot better though, Bruce. Uh, you and I are better. agree with that. I mean, too many wasted plays is what I see. I mean, why are you running reverses with Romello Brinson? I mean, come on, man. I mean, I, I mean, and he, and he did it over and over again. He, I mean, you, we're watching reverses with slow receivers that can't get outside. Um, yeah, but like, you know, I, I always thought they'd be thrown to the backs. They're not. And, and I saw it when, again. I saw it last week, and I saw it today. A couple of times it was Van Dyke mostly in the pocket, looking down the field, looking at one guy, and he had a guy right open in the flat, and, and he just misses them. you got to use those guys. You know, if they're playing, if they're going down the field with your guys, he's right there. He gained 15, 20 yards. I Bruce, thought the quarterback from middle, middle Tennessee he was damn good. For a little guy, he was damn good. We, did, we haven't seen a screen pass yet this year, I don't think. I don't understand it. I don't think we've seen a screen pass this year. And people are getting after the quarterback because of it. And yep. uh, so, yes, G Gattis. He's going out of pass rush, for God's sakes. Gaddis needs to do a lot better. No argument. Uh, to call him trash after three games. Oh, I'm, that's not, I'm not sure I'm there yet. <laughs> you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm watching uh, Jake Garcia in, in a quarter and a half put, you know, put up 169 yards passing. Um in a quarter and a half, that extrapolates to almost the 400-yard passing day. Um, and 17 an points. Yes, with an offensive coordinator that's supposedly trash. So, like, I'm I'm just not there yet. I, I know a lot of people are. I'm looking at the chat. People are, you know, trash, trashing Gaddis left and right, and I understand the anger. But um, it looked different when Jake was throwing the ball well, was on time with the with the passes, was hanging tough in the pocket and not drifting, um, wasn't sailing balls 10 yards over the heads of his receivers. He was um, hitting the guys in the middle of the field, too, which is where they were open. Yes. He, <laughs> and was, I think he, was, so he was hitting guys in a lot of places. And uh, that was the level that we saw from TVD last year as well. He's not showing it to us this year. So that they obviously are going to have a circle of the wagons uh, situation at quarterback. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But uh, I'm I, think not gonna... they, I think Ladson stepped up today, and I think he's yeah. now going to earn more playing time. He caught a lot of tough balls today. Yeah. And Keyshawn, Keyshawn right. Smith stepped up today too and played, started playing play. better. Right. Um, so there's, you know, it's not all negative, but they don't have enough of that. They don't have enough receivers. They don't have enough firepower on offense. Uh, and they certainly don't have enough to compensate for a quarterback that's not accurate. Right. Oh, yeah. Tyler Van Dyke. And now, how many running backs are out? Cheney's still out. Um, Cheney's still out. Still out. Still out. Uh, Parrish is beat up. But and Rooster got hurt again. Rooster got hurt again, yes. Wow. So they, well, they have two weeks. They need it. They need these two weeks, yeah. It's circle the wagons time. We'll see how they come back against North Carolina. All right, let me um, – let, let's get a few more of these callers in. Let's go to the um, – Go to 239. You're on the canesport.com post game show. Where's that? The other side of Florida? Yeah, the reason you 
he's not the reason he's not throwing screen passes is because the wide receivers do not block and hold blocks. How many times do we see someone coming to the side of the field and all of a sudden there's two or three receivers that are there or at least one or two to hold a block and they don't hold blocks? Well, that's that's more on the quick outs. I don't think that's on the, on the screens. The screens, the receivers are down the field. But even so, there's no one holding blocks. The wide receivers aren't holding blocks. You know, it's one of the things, gosh, I forget the coach. It was years ago, maybe it was under Manny Diaz or under Mark Rick. We had a wide receivers coach who was actually pretty darn good. And we became kind of known for our wide receivers blocking. They took pride in our wide receivers blocking as a way to spring long plays. You don't have to throw the ball 70 yards down the field. You can throw it 5, 10, 15, 20. If you're really good downfield blocking, those can become 30, 40, 50 play, 50 yard plays. I think we're seeing some of that. The two things I wanted to mention tonight, I think there's an elephant in the room, which is that this team doesn't have any player leadership. Maybe from Xavier, but he's out. Maybe from a, a James Williams, but he's trying to do too much, which is why he's playing out of position all the time. I think there's no player leadership. You, Alan, or, or, um, I think Mike Harley was a leader. He's gone. Charleston Rambo, I think, was a leader. He was gone. I think TBD became a leader last year when he felt like it was his team with Rhett Lashley. Rhett Lashley's gone, and I think so goes Tyler Van Dyke's leadership. I think Jake Garcia is trying to be a leader, but he didn't come into the game until late. He's trying to take over, and I think he might. And I think that Mario who I still think is one of the best head coaches in, in America. And I think still a great coaching tree underneath him at, at this at this school is not enough. It can't just be coming from the coaches. That's what happens. We have a bunch of B players all across this field. B players, when coached up and playing with intensity and playing physically and executing, can play like A players. When not coached up or not taking coaching, when loafing, when taking plays off, when not taking opponents seriously, can play like C players. Today, an entire team played like C players. A couple of players played like F players. Okay, you, Tyler Van Dyke, right? A couple of players, I think, played more like B or A players. I think that Frank Gladstone actually had a pretty decent game, all things considered, right? I think you had one or two more, maybe across the board, but, you know, Leonard Taylor was a C player today, if he even played, right? When those guys evaporate, who are good in a game like Texas A&M in front of 107,000 people, and come and play an MTSU team, and no one and no one's name gets called, that means that they're just not. They're playing like C players. I think our coaching staff overestimated our team, just like happened a couple of years ago when we went to go play LSU to start start the season. We thought we were going to be a really good team, and our coaches schemed and developed the team accordingly. This year, I think they thought that. We were going to be pretty darn good with our transfers that we brought in. With, you know, we were missing a couple of, of, of positions. We didn't have a, a ton of great wide receivers, but they thought they could mask it with a really strong power running game. They were confident in the offensive line. They were confident in most of the tight ends, except for Mallory's ability to block. That's inexplicable. And I think they thought we we're going to be pretty good. And I think what they're coming to learn, particularly Josh Gaddis, is we're not good enough to be able to win just on being good talent lines alone. We're not talented enough for that yet. It showed up today on the, on the defensive side of the ball. I think Coach Steele, who's a great defensive coach, thought we're going to be pretty, we're going to be okay. Our defensive line is really good. It'll mask a relatively weak and thin linebacker core. Our corners are fast enough and our safeties are pretty good. We should be able to be pretty darn good on defense. But what happens is if not everyone, if, if the D line isn't playing really great, which I thought that they played really well today in some instances and played terribly in others. The linebackers did show up and get exposed all over the place, despite some high tackle counts for our linebackers. And our secondary today played terribly because they're accustomed to the front seven uh, and when they do play well, being the reason that they're able to play so well. There's no excuse for that, that wide receiver running 99 yards, about actually 75 of it on the ground. He broke away from James Williams because you had a safety in front of their of their go route receiver. Inexplicable. 
you can't defend it. It's awful. I think today you had leadership. You had you had coaching overestimation meeting. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt them, but I don't know. If you know. I never heard Kevin Steele come out and say that they were these guys were going to be great. I I think Gary knows that Steele has never really said what he's really thinking. I think he knows there's issues with the defense. I mean, how how slow did Corey Flag look today? How wow. slow? I mean, there was one play where Corey Flag ran right into the back of one of his teammates, and they got gashed for I think it was like a 20, 25 yard gain or something. I mean, but in other times, he looked so slow out there. I mean, listen, they get their the team didn't take the other team seriously. But that seems like it's true, but it's hard to believe. Other than coming off a loss. Yeah, there's there 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 are so many issues uh coming at it today. But um hey thanks for uh th- thanks for calling in. I got I got a comment. Man, uh, the ang- the angry mob's going crazy on the chat. So I, I just want to clarify some things. Okay. Um on all the comments I made earlier in the show, I, I'm not making excuses for anything, okay? That is it, what happened today in the stadium was inexcusable. And it was a complete organizational failure. Okay, now a couple things: the TVD Jake Garcia situation. Absolutely, I thought that Tyler Van Dyke should be the starting quarterback coming into the season. He earned it last year. He had six straight 300-yard games to finish the season, and um, he you don't have to convince me, Gary. It's true. Everybody knows that. Yeah, he deserved Even to be starting quarterback. Now. Garcia was better. He's, there was no way that was going to happen. No, but but people were ready to pull him after last week, Bruce. Like or they're, the, they're, the week before that, when they yeah, struggled with Southern No, Rangers. I understand. So there is a segment of the fan base that wanted to pull Tyler Van Dyke in Texas A&M. Right. And I said, no, he is the starting quarterback. There was nothing that was going on out there that was just his fault. Yes, he had some bad throws in mm-hmm. College Station, but there also were seven drops and a lot of other reasons why they lost the game. So, yeah, 100%. I felt he should be the starting quarterback today. Once that game started being played and he was a, as horrendous as he was and the body language was was terrible yeah. and you could tell that he's a total head case and he had the comments about the fan base during the week and everything else, absolutely, like everybody else that was there, I was waving the Jake Garcia flag too. I am a huge Jake Garcia fan. Yeah. Um, I am the one that has been saying for months that those two were neck and neck a year ago. Right. And I got attacked for that as well. Uh, for pointing that out, and um, but it's it, true. It is a hundred percent true, and and you saw it on the field today. Right. Okay, so there's no excuses being made. Things change minute to minute in this in this world of college right. football, right. and you, you you have to adjust your thoughts to it. That's one thing. Now, the other comment I made that some people are attacking me on was I said they had nothing in the tank today at the line of scrimmage. And I felt that as I'm watching the game. They are playing Middle Tennessee State. They could not gain a yard, okay? Not a yard in most of those short yardage situations. They could not move anybody, okay? Now, I saw them moving guys last week at Texas A&M, Bruce. They were Um, blowing them off the ball last week. Blowing them off the ball. Miami went into College Station a week ago and – Beat the living crap out of Texas A&M, okay? Accept it, don't accept it, attack me, don't attack me, I don't care. They beat the crap out of Texas A&M. Okay, so I'm watching this today, and I'm thinking to myself, these guys don't have it today, man. Like, I don't know, energy, soreness, I have no idea why. Just get emotionally ready, but you know what else, Gary? To me, this is very analogous even when Kelvin played, the week after we played Florida State, win, lose, or draw, we always were flat. Always yeah. were flat. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't want Kelvin to tell me he was never flat a week after playing Florida State. They were always flat. Come on, man. Yeah, like when you play, I mean, and they left it out there, okay? Sure. Please get credit. They went to Texas A&M. That was their statement game. They pointed to that for the entire offseason. Yes, they, they, left, they left it all out there, okay? Today they didn't Maybe have it. the coaches too. Who knows? I had one hundred percent the coaches. Right. And well, and, that's, well, and, coaches. And, and that's unacceptable. Like right, right, coaches, right. coaches can't do coaches gotta let things go. Okay, right. now you know these guys have not all worked for Mario before. Okay. Mario is so demanding on the people that work for him. 
And I could certainly see where if you're not having success, that now all that work you're putting in that you're not seeing the benefits of gets a little tougher to reconcile. You're not seeing your family. You're not seeing your kids. You have no free time. You can't go out to dinner. Like, you know, if you're working right now on that massive staff at the University of Miami, you are sacrificing your life for the U. Right. And he's got a few of his guys that, that were with him out in Oregon, but now he's got some of them, but these other ones are struggling maybe. Well, I don't know. I'm, but I'm just saying I don't feel the coaching staff showed up today either. Right. Um, that team was not ready to play. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so they're not, you know, they're not exempt from all of the uh, criticism, discussion, you know, whatever you want to call what's going on right now. Um, but, you know, the, the point I'm making is I'm watching the same line that beat the crap out of an SEC team last week. Bruce, they couldn't gain a yard. Okay. So like now these guys suddenly suck that were so improved and were performing so well a week ago. I'm not buying that, man. And I don't care. Attack me on the damn chat all you want. Go to all, go to the other Kane's websites and say Furman doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> oh, no, but seriously. <laughs> hey, 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 I heard a word. I heard a word. I know it's internet. We can get away with anything here. There's no S. There's no SEC. Well, we had Kelvin on, so that's true. Yeah, yeah, Kelvin threw a couple bombs, but no. But in, ser- in seriousness, like these guys that were so good a week ago, don't suddenly suck a week later. There is a reason why they were so poor today, and they were poor as hell, man. They could not gain a yard in most situations, right, Bruce? Yeah, there was maybe well, other than Ladson and maybe a few others. The rest of them were all flat, all of them. You know, and, and I, everybody talks about Williams. I don't know how good he is. You know, he gambles a lot. He misses a lot. I mean, I don't know if it's flat. Flat might be an excuse. I mean, I, honestly, the, well, you know, that's like. Well, he certainly cool. can't be as emotionally up for a game like last week against this team. Now, if they had to buy this week and played them next week, it might have been a different story. But yeah, they, they can't do that. I'm not going to. No, we they, lost they were right? not. They weren't emotionally up. They were not. Um, but. Um, Again, it's not an excuse. It's an analysis, okay? I am analyzing why these guys that played so great last week that beat the crap out of Texas A&M couldn't get a yard against Middle Tennessee State. And that's that's what I said all along. If they play like that and just correct the the stupid mistakes like the punting and the receiving dropping all the balls, they would destroy this team. But it was the complete opposite. The receivers did pretty good. The quarterback wasn't so good. But the physicality of it and the, and the, and the aggressiveness just was missing. It, yeah. They weren't fired up. They just came out of the tunnel and said, here we are. And I think it's more sophisticated than Josh Gaddis' is trash. I'm sorry. Oh, well, yeah, it's more than that. But he didn't yeah, help. Maybe he's not a great offensive coordinator. We haven't seen enough of him. I, I don't have an opinion on that. You know, um, I didn't like the way the Michigan offense looked in that game against Georgia last year. But, you know, and, and, and I agree, he's wasting way too many plays right now with – Crazy things like Romello Brinson running reverses. I mean, that's that's the most ridiculous thing I I've mean, ever seen. I mean, you're starting out eight to ten yards in the backfield. These guys have been in your face all day. Where does he think they were going to go? They were going to let the guys run around? No. He, he he Romello Brinson doesn't have the speed to be running reverses. I know. Um, I still don't. But they, I think they should still have some more bubbles, which we haven't seen. But at least it give gives the receiver the ball, and then he can run with it. Blocking is good. But there's too many downfield throws, too much Tyler Van Dyke in that pocket, looking and looking and looking. You got to run some co- crossing routes, some quick, some slants. Get the ball out of your hands. Get yeah, a rip. He's not. And he laid it out of his hand in the first throw, picked off, and the next one was picked off. That was that was a tip ball. That was just a lucky break or a bad yeah, break. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was unlucky. But but you know, but the point is, like, nobody's making excuses for anything. Right. We're trying to we're trying to analyze what happened out there. And, um, you know, well, I mean, Panthers, unless you let me, you, Lamar, and Kelvin coach. <laughs> it's not right, let's go. Um, let's go to the 954. You are now on the canesport.com post game show. 954, you with us? Going once, going twice. All right. Uh, the number is 563 999 3550. 563-999-3550. Hit one on your keypad if you want to come on the show. Uh, let's go to the 786. You are on the canesport.com postgame show. 
Seven eight six, you with us? All right, all right, guys. Um, I'm gonna put out a a, a last call uh, for calls tonight. Um, I would, I guess, I guess Lamar's wife let him in because she's not back. Yeah, no, nah, he's got, he's got Lamar's got to save his material for the uh, Lamar Thomas show <laughs> on um, on Wednesday night. What did he call himself? Angry fan or something? Angry fan, <laughs> angryfan.com. <laughs> <laughs> So Bruce, do you um you have any uh you know closing thoughts? We don't have two more hours, but um I'm disappointed. I'm shocked, I'm disappointed, I'm angry. You know, my me being angry is not gonna change anything. But I I heard I heard uh Mario all Mario all week long talking about how it's on the coaches, we gotta make the corrections, and it didn't happen. I think that's to me is the worst of it all. Is I expect it's a bad word. I expected this to be different, and so far it's not much different. And I'm not talking about talent. I'm talking about every week just laying it out there and see what happens. And I didn't see that today. That scares me a lot. But I'm not saying anything about fire him because that's stupid. Anybody that says that is stupid. You know, so, just stupid. So Joshua Owen says that Josh Gaddis has ruined one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Do you blame Josh Gaddis for TBD not playing very well? Well, you heard, you heard him talk about his mechanics. I I, I play quarterback. It, they're, they're off. And he looked nervous in the pocket. And, you know, the receivers caught some balls today, but a lot of the throws weren't anywhere near them. The one he threw behind Skinner was nowhere near Skinner. Did you remember that one? Skinner was open. And he throws it about eight yards behind him. Who the hell was he looking at? So there's problems with him, but you know they're not on the same page with the receivers. I just want to see the physicality back every single game and let the chips fall where they may. I'll worry about whether he's a good offensive coordinator, coordinator or not. But that offensive line doesn't help Van Dyke or anybody else playing like that. There's no holes being open for the running backs. Everything they can hit at the line of scrimmage every time. All right, we got a few more comments to talk about, but first let's hear from Canesware. Welcome to Canesware. Family owned and operated since 2010, Canesware has all the latest merchandise for the Miami Hurricanes, Miami Dolphins, Inner Miami Soccer, and more. Come visit us at our store in Davie on University Drive, just south of I-595, or online at Canesware.com. Canesware, the spot Miami fan shop. So this guy, Dennis Lopez, makes a comment. Gary, who's asking you, do you think TVD struggles if Lashley is calling the offense? And the, my answer would be yes, because he doesn't have Rambo, he doesn't have Harley. Right. I agree. I agree. What yeah, the hell is Lashley going to do? I agree totally, man. They don't, They, they you know... Listen, I thought Keyshawn Smith did better today. Latson did better today. Um, they don't have much more than that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 you don't have like they couldn't run the Lashley offense with two receivers. Like no. you know, Brashard Smith's too little. You know, he flashes every now and then. He's not as fast as people want to say he is. And he's quick, but he's not fast. There's a difference. Yeah, there's a big difference. Um, when is when is uh, Restrepo supposedly coming back? He's like what? Yeah, he's, he's on crutches, man. He's not close. It's a, he's got to be at least four or six weeks, I would think. Wow. So, um, War War Paint Coding Systems. He says um, that he's been saying over a year in our shows that Garcia is better, but I always said no, no, that's not the truth. I always said from day one that they were neck and neck a year ago. That there was no discernible difference. I've said it a thousand times on these shows. Okay, right. so. Um, I even said it, uh, I think it was the beginning of spring practice, that, you know, Jake Garcia was neck and neck with TVD. We got to see what this looks like in spring practice. I mean, I don't think he just, I never felt like he just dismissed Jake Garcia, but TVD had an edge. He had played six games and had a lot of success in those six games. Are any of these guys saying that TVD shouldn't have started the beginning of this year? After what he did last year, I can't believe that anybody would say that. Nobody should say that. Yeah, I mean, dumb. But you know, now I see it. I get it now. But not not four weeks ago. Today, I see it. this guy's probably better than him, or looks better than him. Gary Eden says that the receivers look better when Jake Garcia was playing. I thought so too. Yeah, I, I mean, he I agree. He's hitting the guys where they're supposed to be hitting the hands. 
And his ball is different. Like, he doesn't have the rocket arm of TVD. And TVD has been overthrowing, Bruce. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that might have contributed to some of the drops. I don't know. Um, but the Jake Garcia pass, I would call it a more a tight spiral, too. He's got yeah. a tight spiral. He doesn't have a wobbly ball. He's got a tight spiral. He's good. I, I like yeah. it. I like his pocket presence, too. Now, I love Frank Ponce, greatest guy, super guy, the whole thing. I don't get this whole Frank Ponce just by default should be Miami's offensive coordinator. I mean, saying that? these guys are saying it. Uh, I've heard it several times. I mean, he was the how offensive do they know? How do they know what system he runs? Do they know him first? They know his history. They say he's a, you know, he, he, I, you know, App State, I think when he was the OC at App State, I think they threw the ball quite a bit. Um, but is Frank Ponce the best offensive coordinator with an unlimited budget that Mario Cristobal can hire if he chooses to move on from Josh Gaddis? I don't Probably know. That not. I, I don't know that I can say that. And I love Frank Ponce. Um, I think he's a, you know, very good coach. And, and I'm not blaming him for TBD's problems. Um, but, you know, people next year we'll have some bigger offensive linemen. We should be even more powerful. You know, uh, Arroyo coming into his own, Mallory will be gone. Uh, Skinner's going to get bigger. Uh, we don't lose any of the backs, do we? All they all could come back. Every, oh, no, not Parrish. Well, you're Edward, a junior, yeah. Ed, Edward Radar wrote our saying that uh, Skinner and Arroyo need to start and get more targets. I totally agree with that. But yeah, Arroyo right. has to be more than a guy that just gets targets, Arroyo. Right. Needs to. He's a big dude, and he's a strong dude. He shouldn't get be getting blown up every week at the line of scrimmage. I saw it at Texas A&M. I yep. saw it again today. He has got to play better as a blocker, right? And earn his time on the field. He's doing a great job catching balls, nice hands, runs good routes, the whole thing. So why not? Why not? Why, why not? Let Dominic play tight end and, and slip out uh, Arroyo. You know, just get him off the line of scrimmage a little bit instead of having him block. Because Mallory hasn't done either. He hasn't been doing that well. He dropped that. He had the ball in his hands on the three, and the guy knocked it out. They called it an incomplete pass. I don't know. I wasn't too sure. But um, that was a big non-scoring event, too, that we didn't get. You know, we should we could have scored there, too. We had our chances. We just blew it again. What are you smiling about? I'm laughing because um, Sau Sauce God, I don't know what the heck that, that username is, Sauce, Sauce God he says Manny would have gotten it right. <laughs> Manny, I, think, I don't know what Penn State's doing today, but Manny's undefeated. They won. Did they win again? Yeah. So they're yeah, they four, I guess four and oh now. Unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't uh, it just, he's not four and oh. They're four and oh. But isn't it just unbelievable? I mean, it's yeah. just, it's just, it's what makes sports so much fun and so, so interesting. I mean, well, you know, it's true. I remember doing my shows when I, when I was screaming for Shuba to get fired because I thought it was time. And I got more crap, but you know what? The callers kept on calling, and I started all this controversy. And that's what happens. A game like this, if they would have blown this team out, we probably would have been done an hour ago with this joke. Yeah, let me see if we um, if, if 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 we picked up any uh, callers. No, we're good. Um, all right, Bruce. Well, um, I think we've uh, pretty much uh, covered it for tonight. <laughs> uh, tough, 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 tough time for the Miami Hurricanes. And uh, I think this really does put the program back to square one. I think it negates nine months of hard work that Mario Cristobal has done. This was a damaging day for this program. This is, this is the day that the people that said when they got Mario and they've been saying it all along, great recruiter can't coach. This plays right into their hands. And I'm not saying well, it's true, but it plays into their hands, Gary. It does, but... You know, fair or unfair, when you lose to Middle Tennessee State, I think Mario will be the first to tell you, you know, yeah, yeah. you deserve everything you, you get from that. I mean, it's it's, it's unacceptable. It's embarrassing. Um, you know, it just it is what it is. Have, what do we have today? One takeaway on the interception by Kinchin. And last week we had none. Wow. Yeah, they're not causing fumbles. I don't know why, uh, you know. Uh, you know, they're going to have to, and 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 this will be a subject, I think, for Tuesday night, Kane Sport Live. Um, they they got to make some adjustments, man. It, 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 it's like, I think they're rotating too much. Um, I haven't seen snap counts yet. I won't get them till tomorrow. But I, I just, like, 
the guys aren't impacting the game. Like Leonard Taylor is not impacting the game enough. Um, They're not tackles. I told you. I told you they have eight defensive ends. Two of them were disguised as D tackles. They don't have real D. They have got to get bigger. Right. In the Leonard game. Taylor and 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 Jackson are are real defensive tackles. Well, they're not three so hundred pounders. But, but how are they playing? Yeah, they are. But how are they playing 17, 17, 18, 19, 20 snaps a game in a in a 70, 80 snap game? That you can't. You, they they they're not going to be able to keep everybody happy anymore. Okay, right. you got to find your best players, and they got to be on the field much more. Okay, they're not good enough to, to keep. Well, I think they see Taylor playing well, and then they see him disappear for five or six or eight plays. Yeah, That's well, not what they want either. Third year now, he can't keep this. Well, no, no, it's um, it's his second year. Second year, yeah, he he cannot keep. He just can't be disappearing. Okay, right. It's like that. That's a guy that's supposed to be one of your linchpins. All right, he can't be disappearing. So, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. It's circle the wagons time. It's a rough day for the program. It's back to square one. There's no sugarcoating it. Okay. No. Recruiting is back to, you know, you, you're going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep the recruits you have already. Yep. It's going to be very difficult to get new ones now. What a yeah. shame. Just one game against a team that we just overlooked altogether is now going to cause all these problems. You're a long way till December. And like Kelvin said, and I actually agreed with him on this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> If you win the Coastal and get to the ACC title, title game, this will be forgotten. I agree. But I said I texted you this morning, and you agreed. they got to beat North Carolina. They one have to beat them because that's the table setter. If we lose that one, yep. anything can happen. Anything we have to beat these guys. And if we beat them, then we start looking forward to the next few games. But right now, we have to beat them. Everything should be focused on that, not what we've done in the last four weeks. No doubt, man. All right, Bruce. Well, uh, uh, thanks for being part of the show as always. Awesome job. I want to thank Canesware um, oh, yeah. for sponsoring um, the show. Uh, thank Kelvin Harris for being our special guest tonight. Um, He's special, all right. <laughs> who else? Anybody else I should thank? He's special, all right. Now he'll call me up and have me on the phone for an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Telling me they're um, going to ruin the table. <laughs> but, hey, hang in there, Canes fans. Um, <laughs> We'll do some more analysis. We'll come back Tuesday night, discuss it some more. Um, Wednesday night, we got the Lamar Thomas show. So a lot more discussion ahead. So for Bruce Warner, Calvin Harris, I'm Gary Furman. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Canesport Post Game Show presented by Canesware. Good night, everybody. Good night.